Hello everybody and welcome back to the FinTech Times. We are here at Cybos 2022, which is being held in Amsterdam. And I'm very, very happy to be joined right now by Marie Konig of Bankify. Marie, how are you? I'm doing very well. It's so good to be back uh, at Cybos at an in-person event after these uh, few years of virtual events. It's just not the same, right? Not a Zoom camera in sight. It's, oh, it's oh, fantastic. It's such a relief. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I keep thinking that the mo people I'm going to break up, uh, talk to are going to break up or lose connection or something, or the, the image is going to freeze. So it's, it's very refreshing to be face to face for once. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we, uh, it's been a very busy side boss, hasn't it? It's been a uh, very full very, on. Yeah, it's very. And um, it also feels like the people that are here, they're here on a mission. They're yeah. here with a purpose. Yeah. They're not just here for, you know, socializing or just <laughs> trying to learn a bit more about the industry. Like mm. the banks are really here to see what they can do next. So it's mm. been a, a very good event for us so far. Good, good. Well, we've got a very interesting um, conversation lined up, and obviously there's a lot going on at Bankify at the moment. Um, but for any of our viewers that aren't quite too familiar with who you are or what Bankify is, why don't you give them a brief introduction? Sure, sure. So my name is Mareike Konings. I'm Chief Product Officer at Bankify. And at Bankify, we work with banks and financial institutions to actually elevate their business banking proposition from something that's purely transactional to um, a, a digital experience that actually brings the financial workflows that a business use on a day-to-day -day basis in the bank's uh, channel. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that for that introduction. Uh, one of the most pressing topics of Bankify actually at the moment is its US expansion. Yes. And that's being backed by $4.8 million worth of investment, which is massive, of course. It is. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to carry you very, very far in the US, I'm sure. But uh, in terms of what that expansion is hoping to achieve, can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Sure. So um, over the last couple of years, um, we've been able to um, establish um, several implementations with banks uh, in Europe as well as in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so we really see um, that there is a, a common need, um, not just in the UK or in Europe, uh, but across different markets. Mm -hmm. And the US for us was um, the logical next, um, I would say, geography to explore a bit further um, to see how well our value proposition would fit with the US banks. Mm. Um, so we're obviously very um, excited to move into, <laughs> in, into the US. Um, and we've only um, launched our US operations um, in July and we're happy to be able to announce already this week um, that we are partnering with uh, Axiom Bank in Florida to roll out um, our services to, to the Axiom Bank uh, customers. So that's went really fast and it's, uh, it's a very uh, exciting time for us to be able to expand to the US as well. Fantastic. So uh, Axiom Bank, you just released uh, that news this week. I mean, um, what, what sort of projects can we expect from you guys? Well, so Axiom Bank's uh, also looking to um, provide a more um, well-rounded uh, financial value proposition to their SMB customers. Mm -hmm. So they're embedding capabilities like invoicing, collection, supplier payments, cash flow forecasting, all from within their own uh, digital user experience. So mm -hmm. it means then rather than just purely looking at, okay, what products do I have as a bank and can I make available to my SMB customers. It's about thinking in terms of what does this SMB really need? Mm. What are the financial workflows they use on a day-to-day -day basis? And how can I as a bank become that front door or that trusted partner for those SMBs to actually run their business from a financial point of view? Mm. That's really, really fascinating. I mean, of course, Bankify is, is, is very well established. and in the European market, as you as you mentioned. But how do you forecast the appetite for your services to differ across the pond in the American market? Well, I think the, the appetite as such wouldn't be too different because mm. problems the problems that we solve for SMBs are pretty global. Mm. So that I mean they they translate very well um, into different markets. 
it's probably the starting position that's mm. slightly different. So if you look at a European market, um, we have um, open banking, real-time payments is a bit more es established. Mm. Um, so I think um, where those SMBs would be starting from, we will see some nuances, some differences in what they're used to, how they used to run their business and so on. Um, but in terms of the problem that we're solving, it's a pretty universal problem that businesses have. And, and if you look at um, some of the tools and the, the capabilities that have been available to larger corporates, mm. um, they had the means, the resources to actually manage. Um, the, a lot of them have in-house banks, they have treasury management systems and so on. Um, but slightly smaller businesses, as in the medium segment, they have similar problems, but they simply don't have the resources, they don't have the leverage with their corporate banks to actually go and get more help from those banks. And I think in essence what we do is we democratize um, capabilities that were previously just reserved for the happy few, uh, let's say the Fortune 500, and we, we make sure that smaller business have access through the use of technology mm -hmm. uh, to similar insights into their business. So what this means is that from a cash flow optimization point of view, um, we now have technologies that can actually make that available to a much broader segment of businesses and it's not just for the happy few that have sophisticated in-house built systems. So I think that's a big shift uh, and a shift for the good. Fantastic. And it, it, you've do, really done well to emphasize why expanding into the US makes so much sense for Bankify. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's mutual problems. In terms of um, the, the the approach of banks, we've a lot of, a lot have been trying to harbor a more uh, consumer-centric approach to their business. What kind of products are they engaging with in order to achieve that? I think it's actually um, a tricky one. Um, so we also see at the same time how um, there's a big shift to embedded finance and embedded banking, mm. meaning that um, financial products become more uh, widely available to third-party applications as well. And I think that is one of the trends that we would like to see not reversed, but also be um, implemented, but then from a bank's point of view. So rather than just making your products available through third-party providers, why don't you think about bringing those third-party providers into your user experience. So it's about flipping that model on its head mm. and rather than um, embedding um, or become the backend um, engine uh, that has very little engagement or interaction with that end user being the business, um, we really believe that it's about turning that around and bringing those other uh, financial management tools and so on within your uh, bank's mm. environment. So when we look at the, the banking challenges that are entering the market and becoming much more pronounced than they were even a few years ago, how do you see their, their rising presence having an impact on the landscape for embedded uh, banking? I think it's a wake-up call mm. for the banks. Mm -hmm. And um, I think banks have a choice. Either they will allow others to eat their lunch and allow those businesses to drift away even further <laughs> from the banks. Yes. And it's happening today because mm -hmm. um, if you look at um, what's going on um, with accounting package providers, for example, they are no longer just offering accounting software. Mm -hmm. They embed payments, they move into the lending space and so on. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as a bank, you can either sit back and allow that to happen, yeah. or you can reflect on how can I do things better or differently for my business customers and mm -hmm. actually bring the eyes back on, on me rather mm -hmm. than those third party providers. So um, I think it's a good thing that others are stepping up the plate and you know showing the art of the possible. Um, and it's now up to the banks to mm -hmm take on the challenge and start mm -hmm. thinking a bit differently and, you know, have a seat at the table again. <laughs> yeah, but where does, where does Bankify come in to that shift? Well, that's exactly what we really, we really believe that this is what banks should be doing. So 
Um, we don't like to be called a fintech. We build financial technology, but fintech often has the connotation that it's competing against banks. Mm. So we actually think the banks should do something, um, and that's what we are here for. So we are. Um, we really want to be the enabler for banks to flip that embedded banking model on its head mm. and become the trusted service provider that they've always been for those small businesses again. Mm. But, re you know, really show those businesses that as a bank, I understand this is how you run a business. These are the workflows you use on a day to day basis and we can help you create those insights. We can help you with with credits if you need to, um, but we'll all base that on us knowing you much better as a business so that's where we come in the picture and where uh, where we really want to elevate the the traditional business banking from what it was uh, very much revolved around the core banking capabilities that the bank already had right yeah. how can you elevate that and you know create that meaningful value proposition create the stickiness but but also provide the right products to the right businesses so that it's about creating that value creating that you know sense of um, understanding your businesses much more and that's what we do fantastic fantastic <laughs> well we've spoken a lot about uh, embedded banking and how it's really come to disrupt the industry mm -hmm. uh, and anybody who engages in it from from your perspective being one of the forerunners in the space which areas of embedded banking should we be watching? Do you think that it's going to start interacting with other forms of technology? Do you think it's going to evolve into, into being something else? What, what, what should we keep our eye on? That's a good question. I think um, em embedded banking and embedded finance, and if you look, for example, at European landscape, there's all, all this talk about what's PSD3 going to mm. look like and so on. I think the, the ball is rolling. Yeah. It's happening. Um, all the stakeholders in, in let's, let's call it the ecosystem, by lack of a better word, <laughs> it's a bit overused, but, you know, the vendors, the banks, um, the technology providers, but also the end users, they're all finding their place um, uh, in how things are shaping up going forward. Um, I think this is an unstoppable move towards um, more um, workflow based um, approaches um, and I think we'll just see the the financial industry built on what's already there um, mm. again a lot of processes that are today very tedious and paper based mm. are moving to a more automated um, type of implementation which is obviously <laughs> good for everyone because nobody likes <laughs> manual tasks. Um, so I think it's a bit of an unstoppable um, trend, if you want. Yeah, yeah. But it's been fascinating to speak to you, uh, Marieke. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marieke uh, Kunik of uh, uh, Bankify. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time at Cybos. And uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you.